Hi, I'm, I'm Holger. I'm a team lead for the Ethereum JS team, which actually is the JavaScript team within the Ethereum Foundation. And I'll give you a short introduction to what we're up to, what we're doing, and then the other team members will uh, introduce some, some parts of the roadmap for, for 2019. Uh, so what's Ethereum JS? Ethereum JS is mainly um, this GitHub organization at uh, github.com slash ethereum.js, and what Lane said, we, we mainly do base-level infrastructure components in JavaScript. So this is an implementation of the virtual machine, dev P2P implementation, Merkle tree implementation, and so on. And we roughly have got 20 actively managed repositories there, so lots of work, and mostly is done by the Ethereum Foundation. There are some other um, managed repositories from other people. Um, just as an introduction, we do monthly ecosystem updates on Reddit um, since some time. Um, so if you want to stay up to date what, we're, what we are up to, what we are doing at the moment, uh, go on Reddit and have a look out there um, what's going on. Uh, I just revived a repository organization. So if you've got for, for general project management stuff, so if you want to uh, suggest something which we, we could do better or new projects uh, we should do, you can go there and just file an issue there, and then we can start a discussion there. And we've got our mandatory Jitter channel at Ethereum slash EthereumJS, and you can go there for tech-related questions or for getting contact at, in first, uh, first place as well. Um, so what are the characteristics of our libraries? We initially developed for Node.js, and then we distribute many of our libraries as well uh, as ES5 modules for the browser. So for example, the VM is a browser-first uh, library, and, uh, and is also actually uh, run in, in various tools um, like Remix or MetaMask uh, or Truffle, uh, so many development tools. Uh, our libraries are, are high quality libraries. We've got Unity tests, uni, uh, unit tests for all the libraries, all are CI integrated, and we have the test coverage uh, above 90% in most cases. And this actually is really needed because, yeah, like, like I said, the libraries are, are very much used in production and, and also in, in security sensitive contexts. Um, we do lag behind a bit on, on modernization of our libraries. We are very much aware of that, um, uh, like uh, using modern JavaScript features like promises, and we, we are very much callback-based still, uh, and ES6 classes and stuff like that. But we have this on the plate as well, and we'll do updates on that as well. And another part is TypeScript integration, where Alex will, will talk about uh, more later. Um, actually, many of, of the work being done is actually coming from a community, and, and we are highly community-driven projects. And, and I'm always very much amazed that every now and then some super high quality uh, pull request comes in, like implementing Merkle trees or uh, doing a super high quality new client RPC server. And this is just coming out from, from nowhere. Uh, and I, I actually want to take the stage and say thank you to all you guys who contributed to our libraries. Um, and yeah, thank you. And, and I've got very much this on the plate that we should more emphasis on this, uh, or if, that we should emphasis on this even more. We do get it getting better on review times. We are not there where we want to be, but I have this very much on the plate that we want to improve there. Uh, I just introduced a labeling system as well, and we've got a new cooperation with Gitcoin. So many ways to contribute to our libraries. Um, and also talk to us uh, at DEF CON. Um, just remember our faces. I'm very happy if, if we get an exchange later about uh, what we can do and what we can do better, actually. Um, these are some of our libraries. I don't want to dig in there too deep. The virtual machine, uh, transaction library, Merkle Patricia tree, various utility libraries, um, and implementation of base level um, protocols like the RLP library, for example, and, and many others, just to give you a short overview. But you can look at the organization, um, GitHub organization, for, for a better overview on that. And th that was already my introduction. We have many speakers today. Uh, next is Jared, uh, who will give you some update on the virtual machine. Thank you. So hi, um, I'm Jared Wassinger. Um, I have done quite a bit of work on the Ethereum JS implementation of the virtual machine, as well as other projects. The virtual machine is designed to be uh, a web-first library. Uh, it's embedded in tools like Remix and used in other tools like MetaMask. It uh, captures Ethereum, Ethereum state transition rules as defined by the official test suite. And it provides, we like to think that it provides a modular implementation of the various blockchain components like the uh, block, blockchain, the VM, uh, so, so that the community can make use of them in the browser and uh, uh, with Node.js applications. So uh, just to give you an idea of what we are doing regarding up, updating to Constantinople, we've implemented all EIPs in the VM. 
We're, we're still waiting for some additional testing around XT code hash, uh, and we thank the testing team so much for uh, doing uh, the hard job to provide those tests to us. Uh, we also have a few edge cases in the create two op code that we're working to fix, and we're thinking that a release should come around two to three weeks from now. Uh, in addition, uh, thanks to um, generous community contributions, we have a brand new uh, API test suite for Ethereum JS, and that has brought our uh, test coverage to 93%. So. Uh, you know, like like the whole the the theme of this conference, I'd like to think is that we're trying to put the spotlight back on the community, and I think that this uh, demonstrates that. And uh, you know, as Holger said, we've just gotten so many community contributions, and it's uh, so wonderful. So uh, just to kind of give a brief outlook on what uh, the future holds, we're looking at uh, in integration with eWASM, which is the execution layer for Ethereum 2.0. Uh, but there's a few uh, difficulties here that I, I can kind of touch on. Uh, so eWASM defines an API that isn't exactly compatible with the browser in the sense that it's synchronous, whereas uh, the browser, uh, it, anybody who's programmed JS knows that uh, everything is async. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we have a few possible solutions. We're looking at one is to rewrite the VM to be synchronous. I don't personally think that will work. Uh, for various reasons, but another uh, approach could be to implement a translation tool. Um, and I won't go into too much detail because we could, we could go a whole day on that. Um, so if you want to know more about this, I would invite you to go to this link I have under more resources, and we would very much welcome contributions on this front. So. Uh, if you want to, if you want to contribute on this, if you want to do something, please reach out. Uh, we're on Gitter; uh, is generally a good place to find us. I'm going to pass this off to Vinay, who works on the client. Hi, um, my name is Vinay, and I'm working on the uh, Ethereum JavaScript client. And um, so, why do we need another client? So our goal is, is not to actually build um, another consensus critical client like Geth or Parity. Instead, um, we're, we want to build a working client to help harden some of the other existing JavaScript libraries, like the VM and the Merkle Patrician tree, et cetera. Um, another goal is to uh, provide an R&D platform for new features like uh, libpdp support, um, the uh, Ethereum 2.0 stateless clients, for example, and, and, and you know, future uh, research efforts. And finally, I um, wanted to provide an educational tool. Um, JavaScript is really friendly to a large community of developers, and it's a great way to, um, to learn about um, the you know, details of how an Ethereum client uh, would work. And uh, so in terms of the architecture, um, it's heavily inspired by uh, Bcoin, which is the Bitcoin JavaScript client. And, um, and like that, it's, it's heavily event-driven and um, based on a set of loosely coupled components, um, which leads to a very extensible design, um, for example, through plugins. Um, and in terms of the roadmap, uh, currently we have a proof of concept of a client that could um, uh, sync to mainnet and other uh, ne networks through fast and, and light sync protocols, and um, also a prototype of uh, libpdp, um, obviously, uh, that's not used to sync to other clients because they don't support it yet, but within the Ethereum JS um, uh, environment, it, it does work. And um, also uh, browser support. And um, by the end of the year, we want to hopefully provide reliable um, mainnet uh, chain sync. And uh, this includes uh, block validation and um, transaction uh, execution as well. And then integration with a Hive, which is a test um, set up to, to test sync functionality. And um, the goal by, by the mid of next year is to have a proof of concept of a 2.0 stateless client and um, an alpha release of the uh, current client. So now um, there's enough time. We're going to do a quick demo. Uh, this is a video because just weren't sure about the Wi-Fi environment here. So um, all of this code is downloaded, is, is available on GitHub. And you know, feel free to run these examples yourself. 
So this is an example of the JavaScript client um, syncing to the RinkyB network, uh, launching, um, uh, including LightServe functionality. And you can see here it's listening on both RLPX and um, RLPX and uh, libpdp transports. And we'll, we'll save the libpdp URL for the next um, step in the demo. Um, and you can see it's uh, downloading blocks. Um, so now we'll move on to the more fun stuff, which is, um, so this is an actual demo of a browser that's connecting to the client we just launched um, over WebSockets, which is available through libpdp. And um, so we'll launch the clients in the console. We don't have a UI yet, um, but you can, um, here we're pasting in the URL that we copied in the previous step. And so directly from the browser, we're gonna connect to that client and start uh, downloading blocks. And uh, this and this uses the um, uh, local storage in the browser uh, via IndexedDB, and you can see here um, this is just some of the raw data in the database. So um, yeah, so that's, that's it. So yeah, it's great. Uh, and um, I, again, on the theme of contributions, um, there's a ton of work left to do. So we're hoping um, to get the community to help uh, contribute and move the, move things quickly. Uh, so I'm going to hand this off now to Casey. Yeah. I'm Casey. I started uh, contributing to Ethereum JS last year for Byzantium, so implementing Byzantium features um, in 2017. And I wanted to just highlight one of our research project to do's uh, on the Ethereum JS team. Um, I'm also now uh, working with the EWASM team. So that's why we're we'll get into this uh, phase two because most Ethereum 2.0 R&D efforts right now are focused on phase one, which is implementing the beacon chain. Uh, there's another team, uh, Chainsafe, who's working on a JavaScript implementation of the beacon chain called Lodestar. Um, but as a member of the EWASM team, we're not so concerned with phase one. We're focused on phase two, which is the going to be the execution engine of Shasper. So one of our to do's is prototype um, phase two. Right now, there's uh, a lot of ideas bouncing around for how to uh, what the spec should be for the uh, phase two execution engine. Um, all phase one does is orders a set of data blobs, and that's actually the hard part. <laughs> so it's um, actually easier to, if you have an ordered set of data blobs, than to just process them as uh, transactions. And that's what the goal is for prototyping phase two. Uh, one of the ideas being bounced around for phase two is uh, stateless clients. Um, and it's actually probably the most, uh, the simplest you can do. Client just has a 32 byte state root. And uh, I mean the trade off is that then transactions become much larger because they have to include the Merkle proof of all the touched accounts. Um, hopefully you can see this. This is a uh, visualization of the uh, Merkle Patricia tree, which is the tree that's used in Ethereum, current Ethereum 1.0. Um, so this is an uh, example of an advantage of when you have lots of libraries and tooling in JavaScript, you can do neat things like visualize them um, fairly easily in, in, in the browser, uh, which really helps with debugging and, uh, and explaining how things work. So. To conclude, why do we want to prototype Shasper and JS? Um, because there's already a lot of base libraries in JS and also you know, user interface tools. For example, if we have to change the transaction format for Ethereum 2.0, then uh, getting those working in JavaScript libraries lets uh, other projects like uh, MyCrypto and uh, MetaMask and different wallets uh, more easily test out these UI changes. Also, there are mature networking libraries. For example, libp2p. Libp2p is being uh, adopted, probably, as the 
uh, networking library for Ethereum 2.0. And um, it's not, doesn't have a mature implementation in every language, but it does have a pretty decent one in JavaScript. Also, if the phase two execution engine is eWASM, then it's very convenient to have a native uh, JIT, powerful you know, WebAssembly JIT engine uh, from the browser. So we get that for free implementing in JavaScript. And of course, I mean, JavaScript's everybody's favorite language, so obviously should implement it in, <laughs> in JavaScript. And uh, that's what I'm gonna pass off to uh, Alex now. Um, thank you, Casey. Um, so my name is Alex. I've worked in Ethereum JS for a long while, but today uh, mostly I'm focused on Iwasm and, and the Solidity compiler. Um, anyhow, I do have a couple of things to say here. So there are a lot of 2.0 things flying around nowadays. So I'm just going to talk a bit about Ethereum JS 2.0 and what that may look like. Uh, but first, just take a step back. Um, you know, what is Ethereum JS currently? Uh, a lot of the APIs in Ethereum JS are fully synchronous. A good example for that is the wallet. Um, and one particular example in the wallet itself is random number generation that is expected to be fully synchronous today. A lot of people run into issues trying to integrate it into mobile devices where random number generation would be asynchronous. Um, but compared to that, a lot of the code in Ethereum JS is fully asynchronous as it was mentioned before. Um, so one example for that is the VM. That's fully asynchronous. Um, maybe we should have a bit more consistency between the libraries and you know, choose one way or the other. Um, also, Ethereum JS was mostly written like two years ago, and it has been upgraded and improved, but only incrementally. It hasn't been, it hasn't had like a big rewrite. So maybe we should, we should consider doing like bigger changes and you know, improving it from the ground up. Um, while doing these improvements, we may you know, decide on choosing a different language. Um, so in the team, there's like a, a bit of understanding that we maybe going to TypeScript uh, would give us some benefits. OK, with TypeScript, the, the main benefit there is types, types, and types. Um, one big part of Ethereum just today is with dealing with types and having a lot of code to ensure that the data is valid. Uh, we do that because we don't have types. Um, and there were a couple of bugs with that. So this example here is from 2015. Um, the, back in 2015, it was the famous Ethereum JS bug, uh, where in one in 256 instances, the public key would be invalid. And some either was lost uh, during that process. Uh, so in this example, we are concatenating the X and Y components of the public key. And in the case of the X component, because it's represented as an array, if the X component starts with a zero byte, that is just ignored. We wouldn't have had this problem with TypeScript because all of it, like X and Y component would have been a proper type. Um, also, don't be afraid. This commit is from 2015. The code has improved. It doesn't look like this anymore. Some other reasons for TypeScript. Um, it is practically a typed extension of JavaScript, so it, it should look familiar to everyone who has JavaScript as their favorite language. Um, it can also be compiled to JavaScript, and it can be mixed for, with JavaScript. That means JavaScript code can be imported. Um, as a result, we don't need to rewrite everything at once. We can do it step by step. Uh, one important thing to mention here is assembly script. Um, so assembly script is a subset of TypeScript which can be compiled to WebAssembly. Uh, Casey has mentioned the Bosom as like a future potential execution engine. Um, so assembly script, um, supporting TypeScript in Ethereum JS and having assembly script would enable us to write smart contracts in JavaScript and have it on Iwasm. Um, and while doing this rewrite, we have an opportunity to make things right and did it redesign it well. Okay, what's the future like? So today there's already an incomplete implementation of uh, the EVM in TypeScript. And it's not done by this team. It's done by someone else. Um, our own initiative is called Ethereum TS. Uh, but the Ethers.js um, team, well, the single person working on it, uh, has done a lot of work in rewriting the code in TypeScript. Um, I think we shouldn't, hey, I think we shouldn't uh, have all these competing projects. Uh, we should just combine our efforts and have one complete, fully tested, comprehensive Ethereum TypeScript implementation. Um, so I think that's the future. Thank you.